Good evening and welcome to our webinar on foreign financial institutions FATCA reporting obligations. My name is Jimmy Sexton. I'm going to be your presenter today. Uh, this presentation was prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. Uh, again, my name is Jimmy Sexton. I'm the founder and CEO of Esquire Group, which is an international tax advisory firm that specializes in cons strategic consulting and international taxation, including U.S. citizens with foreign income or assets, expatriation, family offices, succession planning, structures for ultra high net worth individuals and corporate structures for SMEs. Uh, I have a bachelor's in business administration with an emphasis in finance, uh, JD and LLM in international taxation, I'm fluent English and German. If you want to know more about me, you can click on the link on uh, this slide uh, and check out my bio on our website. Um, these slides are also available for download through your go to webinar control panel. So if you don't want to take notes, uh, you can just download these slides and you'll have the information. Uh, additionally, we will be posting a recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel so you can always refer back to it uh, once it is posted. Uh, so first question, what is an FFI? So I imagine if you're attending this webinar, you probably already know the definition of FFI, meaning uh, it's a foreign financial institution. But what exactly is a foreign financial institution? I think most people think of a foreign financial institution as like a bank or a brokerage or something like that, and that would be correct. Uh, but that's not what this webinar is about today. We're gonna be talking about other uh, types of FFIs that might be less obvious, but nevertheless, our FFI is a need to comply with FATCA. So again, uh, we'll go through the definition of, of foreign financial institutions. So the three main areas are uh, if it accepts deposits in the ordinary course of a banking or similar business, such as banks or credit unions. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, a foreign financial institution would be a foreign bank or credit union or something similar or it holds financial assets for the account of others as a substantial portions of its business, such as brokerages or custodians. Custodians might not be so obvious of the next time, but, but a custodian could also be a trustee, for example, or a private trust company. Uh, so that's something that might not even be operating, um, uh, like a private trust company, for example, could be a, a, a private entity that's not even offering services to the general public. Nevertheless, it could be an FFI. Um, or is engaged or holding itself out as being engaged primarily in the business of investing, reinvesting, or trading in securities, partnership interests, commodities, or any interest. This includes futures or forward contract or options in such securities, partnership interests, and commodities, such as mutual funds, private equity funds, and hedge funds. So just to kind of shorten it up, here's some very common types of FFIs, banks, credit unions, brokerages, custodians. Again, custodians uh, being uh, trust companies, which I listed independently uh, as well on this list, mutual funds, hedge funds, private equity funds, uh, insurance companies that offer cash value products or annuities, trust companies, uh, certain other trusts uh, can also be holding companies potentially and investment companies. So it's very wide ranging um, and can even be, you know, private, uh, fairly small enterprises uh, that aren't, you know, huge uh, global companies. So this is something that, you know, a very wealthy family with a, a private trust company, for example, uh, could fall under the definition of an FFI and potentially have some FATCA reporting requirements, which is why you should care. Uh, so what are the FFI responsibilities? Um, so, I mean, one of the things an FFI is required to do uh, is register with the IRS. Um, and obtain a, a GIN, a global intermediary uh, identification number, um, and, re and determine if it has any US accounts, comply with, comply with any required due diligence or verification procedures to make sure that the person, uh, the account holder is who they say they are, report this inf information on US accounts to the IRS, deduct and withhold 30% tax on certain payments paid to account holders who do not supply the required information, so basically, if the bank asks an account holder, hey, uh, are, you, are you an American? Uh, and the person doesn't answer, the, um, the bank is supposed to deduct 30% on, on certain payments to, to that individual. Um, 
and also this would apply to to pay, certain payments made to non fatca compliant uh, FFIs. So if there is an FFI uh, that is non fatca compliant, then the a fatca compliant FFI should also be deducting this uh, thirty percent from certain payments. Uh, comply with IRS information requests uh, and obtain uh, attempt to obtain from U.S. account holders uh, a waiver of applicable bank secrecy or other information disclosure limitations. Um, this is basically, uh, for example, I think of the best known one is, is Switzerland has bank secrecy where it would be illegal for a bank to give uh, information to the IRS. In such a situation, the bank has to obtain from the U.S. person a waiver of that bank secrecy. Uh, and if they can't obtain it, uh, then they're supposed to close the, the account, the Swiss bank would. Um, so these are, are the basic FFI responsibilities. But um, so assuming you are an FFI, you do need to comply with FATCA, uh, what has to be reported to the IRS? So FFIs are required to send the following information to the IRS. Uh, in general terms, it would be the name, address, and U.S. identification number. Usually it would be the Social Security number or EIN number of each account holder that is a U.S. person. Um, in the case of an entity with one or more U.S. owners, uh, assuming they're what are called substantial U.S. owners, meaning they own 10% or more of the foreign entity or the entity at all, it'd be a U.S. or, or foreign entity, uh, they would be required to report the U.S. owner's name, address, and uh, taxpayer identification number, TIN for short. Uh, again, that would normally be the, the social security number of each substantial U.S. owner in the entity the account number, the year-end account balance or value, as well as the gross receipts and gross withdrawals or payments from the account. Um, so what happens if you don't comply? Well, the penalty uh, in, in general um, is that you would be subject, if, if, assuming you're, you're a non-compliant FFI, would be that uh, US financial institutions and compliant FFIs would be required to withhold 30% uh, tax on certain U.S. source payments made to you, uh, which can have a dramatic impact if somebody's invested heavily in, in the United States. So it is best uh, to comply. Here's our contact details should you need any help uh, with figuring out uh, your FATCA reporting obligations, figuring out if you're an FFI or not an FFI. Uh, we can help you out with that. You can contact us at info at esquiregroup.com or visit us on the web at esquiregroup.com for a full list of our services. Have a good day or evening wherever you are. Bye-bye.